What does a tether ball have to do with punch mechanics, you might ask? Well, when it comes to physics, everything. You've probably played tether ball before. Silly kids game, right? Wrong. Because when you understand the physics behind tether ball, you'll understand the physics behind punching power and speed. And today, I'm going to explain both. Hey guys, Dr. Alex here, Punch Doctor, CEO of Punching Power. And today I want to break down the actual physics behind the linear mechanics and the integrated mechanics I teach on my channel. These aren't just different styles. They operate under entirely different laws of physics. And the integrated mechanics I teach have an exponential advantage. I'm going to go over the differences today along with a few simple ways you can feel the difference for yourself. Back to tetherball. The equipment is simple. You have a pole, a rope, and a ball. The human body is a little bit more complex, and we'll get to that. But for now, think of the rough equivalents as the spine, connective tissue, and your fist. There are two main physical principles I want to discuss. Centripetal force and angular velocity. Rope connects the ball to the pole. If you took the rope away, the ball would fly off in a straight line. The rope is pulling the ball towards the pole. That's centripetal force. As the ball flies around the pole, the rope shortens. As the rope shortens, the arc tightens and the angular velocity, or the ball speed, increases. If you interrupt the flight path, like by catching the rope with your hand, the radius instantly shortens and the ball speed spikes significantly. Now here's where things get interesting. Your body can do the same thing, but with way more power. Instead of a rope, you have kinetic chains chains of muscle and connective tissue, or fascia, pulling the fist inward, creating centripetal force as your punch arcs. Your body can actively shorten the radius through coordinated and sequential joint motion while your fascia maintains the arc. You're not just conserving energy like the tether ball, you're compounding it. That's how you create power with an integrated punch. Your legs and hips initiate the rotation. Your connective tissue allows your punch to travel in an arc like the tether ball, and your body reduces the arc joint by joint, accelerating your fist all the way to impact. But for this to work, your punch has to follow an arc. Let's look at how this plays out in the human body. A lot of punching demonstrations show a limited, rigid, linear style. Even hooks and uppercuts are taught a straight line, simultaneous, rather than sequential movements. This type of movement has a front-loaded acceleration with no amplification as it moves. The muscle gets the fist moving, however, once it's moving, it stays at a consistent speed throughout the rest of the movement. Think about throwing a javelin with a locked arm, swinging a bat in a straight line, or pushing a sled. The effort comes in the beginning, but then gets easier and tops out very quickly. These linear mechanics are often taught on the web, including in the Soviet style. I'll do a full breakdown on the pitfalls of that style down the road. The linear style is 2D, it moves in straight lines. However, the integrated style adds a third dimension, rotation. Now, when you introduce rotation to your punches, you unlock torque, acceleration, and what I call the kinetic cascade, a multiple lever system which compounds acceleration from the ground up, multiplying speed and power through every segment of the body. Just like in tetherball, each link shortens the radius, increasing angular velocity at every link. This stacks acceleration on acceleration, allowing each link to move faster and faster until impact like a whip. Additionally, we utilize the stretch shortening cycle, a cycle of quick stretch and violent contraction in every link, including our core to further amplify our body's acceleration. The centripetal force our fascia and muscles create is just like the rope in a tetherball. That connective tissue tension in our kinetic chains is what allows this to happen. You have the system built into you. It's already there. You just need to realize it and start utilizing it. My program can help you do that very easily. And the connective tissue tension doesn't just exist in the arm. It starts in the hips where the rotation begins. This inherent tension in our body with hip rotation allows the arc to stay tight and directed and allows our muscles to shape the direction or trajectory of our punch. This is the crux of the kinetic integrated mechanics. Let me slow this down a bit. When you look at the punch as a whole body integrated movement, instead of a series of isolated linear movements, you unlock the full benefit of rotational physics. It starts in the hips. 
As your body rotates, you create tension in the chains and connective tissue that runs through the body. That connective tissue creates centripetal force, pulling your fist inward and keeping it tethered to your body just like the ball. This centripetal force is what allows you to get the full benefit of rotational physics. As your body turns, it stretches the muscles of your kinetic chains. When those muscles contract, they turn your joints into pivot points. Each segment fires in sequence as an additional lever, adding more and more speed as the energy travels through your body. This compounds speed and power. Each link accelerates the next, multiplying fist velocity and fully utilizing every physical advantage your body has. The linear 2D style has none of this. The principles work in every punch, including the jab and straight, which also follow arcs as I've shown on my channel. It just takes a reframing of your perspective to see the punch as a swing or throw rather than a linear straight line movement. I'm gonna show you the difference with a two pound weighted ball. I'm gonna show you how much energy I can put into a ball using the linear push versus a throw with a tightening arc that mirrors the natural, more integrated punch mechanics. If I push the ball with linear punch mechanics, you can see how the energy I create is limited. Now take a look at how much force I can generate when I throw it. The ball has much more speed at release and travels much further, indicating significantly more force production. Now, of course, no one's going to throw a punch with such a wide arc. However, watch what happens when I tighten that arc almost to a straight line for a straight punch, and you can see how much more power it still has. Significantly more speed and power at release than the linear push. Now let's look at some individual mechanics. Let's first take a look at the linear mechanics hook. And as you'll see, I'll pivot on my front foot. I do have a little bit of hip and torso disconnection just because I'm so used to throwing it this way. However, you'll see that my arm is moving in a linear fashion rather than using my connective tissue for centripetal force. So there's a practice one and there's the actual one. Let's watch it one more time. I'll throw a practice one and you can see how my arm is moving in a straight line rather than an arc, right? Okay, so you saw that one, the linear punch. Let's look at a more integrated hook. All right, I'm gonna throw a demonstration one and then I'm gonna to toss one with my mechanics. And you can see obviously how much farther that goes. I'll show you another example with an unloaded fist and then with the ball. So quite easy, it doesn't take a lot of effort, and it just slings, right? Now let's take a look at a lead hook with rear hook mechanics where I do pivot on the front foot to really get as much possible rotation as I can. And you can see that that one goes even farther. Now this is something that I caution about. It puts you out of position, however, in a situation where you have very little chance of being countered, you can really generate a lot of power that way. It's essentially a rear hook mechanics with a lead hook. Let's have a look at the linear uppercut mechanics and then compare them to integrated uppercut mechanics. Now you're gonna see me use my body just like individual portions all trying to contract at once. So hopefully that's a pretty good representation of a linear uppercut. You'll see how guys do it. They squat down and push up, not really using a circular type arc. And now let's look at what an integrated uppercut looks like. So you can see the ball goes much higher and I throw a you know practice one in there and then another one. So quite a significant difference there. Let's take a look at the type of force I can generate with the linear jab versus the integrated jab. So let's look at the linear jab first. You're gonna see I don't use my hips. I just do it in a straight line with a step and essentially push the jab forward. Now let's take a look at the integrated jab. 
You're gonna notice how I move my hips quite a bit more and really power the punch from the ground up using my entire body and the crossbody kinetic chains. There's a little practice one and then the second one. Let's look at it one more time and I'll throw a jab with an empty hand and then do the very similar motion with the ball. Look how much farther it goes. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison. As you can see, it's a night and day difference. Plus, when you factor in all the other benefits of the integrated mechanics, like impact tension, impact amplitude, and weight transfer, the difference becomes even more significant. Getting back to the demonstration, the kinetic integrated mechanics allow more speed and power and much more fist velocity at impact. Instead of the acceleration coming at the beginning and carrying a consistent velocity through the movement, the acceleration compounds and maximum velocity comes at the end of the motion when you're actually making impact. When your success can hinge on a few hundredths of a second, you want all the speed you can get. And you can see the difference quite clearly right here when Bud beats Spence to the punch. Watch Spence, linear trajectory, barely any hip rotation. Now look at Bud, full body integration, significant hip rotation powering the punch. Notice Spence's more linear trajectory with very little hip rotation. And now take a look at Bud's whole body integration to power the punch from the ground up. Kinetic integrated mechanics are not just about power. Although this is how natural punchers develop it, it's about using your whole body to increase speed, fluidity, and to allow one punch to seamlessly end where the next one begins to improve follow-up and combination flow. If you want to see this principle pushed to the max, just watch Roy Jones Jr. He didn't just throw punches, he used his entire body like a multi-lever sling to whip energy through his entire body. Every punch starts from the ground. You can see the ripple, hips, torso, arm. No muscling or try-hard mechanical movements, just integrated full body mechanics in motion. And I can teach you exactly how to use your body this way in my program, The Power Punching Blueprint. Not a mimicry of Roy or trying to copy his style, but the underlying systems and principles that make his movements possible. To summarize, you have a spine, connective tissue, muscles and fascia, and a fist. You have all the components you need to generate rotational force and speed through a multi-lever system to compound and maximize acceleration and fist velocity at impact. Your fascia tethers your fist to your rotating body with centripetal force. Your muscles shape the arc, multiplying your natural multi-lever advantage. The stretch shortening cycle further accelerates each link in that chain, compounding force until everything converges at impact. That's the kinetic chain in action. The description of this and the physics explanation sounds complicated. However, actually training your body to do this is simple. Your body already wants to do this. The fundamentals are exactly the same to throwing a ball. So if you can throw a ball, you can master these movements and I can show you exactly how. If you're interested in learning more and punching with more speed, fluidity, power, and ultimately maximizing your success in the ring, MMA, or just keeping yourself safe, you owe it to yourself to check out my program the Power Punching Blueprint. Become the person you know you can be and buy it today at howtopunchharder.com. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.